How is it going everyone? Daxels here and today you're going to be reacting to another space video. What if the Earth got kicked out of the solar system and became a rogue Earth? Let's get straight into it. Let's get into it. The night sky seems peaceful and orderly. Okay. But in reality, stars are careening through the galaxy at speeds of hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour. Not bound by static formations, but changing neighborhoods constantly. Fortunately, space is big, and so the stars of the Milky Way are very unlikely to hit us. Unfortunately, they don't have Mad. to hit anything to make us have a really bad time on Earth. And there are already stars starting to get very close. Oh, hell no. Nah. have nightmares again people to understand how dangerous stars are to us we need to talk about gravity gravity attracts every piece of matter to every other piece of matter in the universe true that true you that you are attracted by an atom a million light years away and vice versa luckily this force gets weaker over distance and it also depends on how massive something is so things okay. that are close and are very massive are more attractive winning the cosmic tug of war this way, massive things define how smaller things behave around them. The sun makes up 99.75% of all the mass in the solar system, and so it shapes the behavior and orbits of everything else in it. Billions of years ago, after the sun was born, the solar system was a chaotic and dangerous place as the planets were formed from countless little pieces that collided constantly. Oh, okay. But over the eons, a stable balance emerged. Mm. Today, most planets and asteroids have settled into safe and predictable orbits. We have the inner and outer planets, the asteroid and Kuiper belt, and at the edge, the Oort cloud, a giant sphere of comets orbiting slowly in cold storage. Oh, hell we no. We don't want this balance to be disturbed. <laughs> if another star came too close to us, its gravity would pull on everything in the solar system like a spoiled toddler, messing up the pleasant order of the planets and asteroids and no. comets. This isn't some imaginary danger. Some 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf, brown dwarf binary system passed through the Oort cloud and messed things up. It might even have sent a deadly onslaught of asteroids our way. But it could take two million Jeez. years until those visitors from the Oort cloud oh, arrive in the inner solar system. No! But there's a much bigger problem on the horizon. Gliese 710, a red dwarf with about half the mass of the sun, is currently headed towards the solar system. Oh, in about a million okay. years, oh, it'll well, pass well, through the Oort cloud can't. and become the brightest star in the night sky. Jeez. A close flyby like this would unfold over hundreds of thousands of years, disrupting the orbits of millions of objects in the Oort cloud considerably. If we're unlucky, it will trigger a new period of planetary bombardment similar to the early solar system. The night sky could be filled with comets and asteroids raining down on the inner solar system. Oh, no, the larger bro. ones could cause dinosaur-level mass extinctions and would be bad for the stock market. <laughs> but it could get much worse. Okay. The galaxy is an intense place, and stars get close to each other regularly. So it is possible that a star could come much closer and not just pass us, but fly directly through the inner solar system. This would be very bad in the extreme. Bro. The chance of another star colliding with the sun is astronomically unlikely, but that isn't what we're worried about. What if if another us? star were to pass by about as close as the Earth is from the sun, it could easily eject the Earth from the solar system. Oh. The odds of such an event are estimated to be around 1 in 100,000 in the next 5 billion years. Bro, don't tell me the Small, odds. Never tell me the odds. So. <laughs> As we discussed in another video, there seem to be billions of rogue planets doing their own thing in the galaxy, and this is one way to make them. So if this were to happen with an average red dwarf, what would happen on Earth? Kicking Earth out of the solar system. As the star enters the solar system, a small orangish dot appears in the sky that grows bigger and bigger for months, eventually becoming visible during the day. It would get bigger and much brighter than the moon. Oh. Too bright to look at directly. Oh! The night sky would be filled with an eerie red glow. After a few months, it would start shrinking again. Bro, the apocalypse. But so would the sun. <laughs> Over a few years, the sun slowly grows smaller in the sky, and with it, warmth and light start to dissipate. Oh, we're All going to an ice world, age. As the days turn dark, the final winter of humanity would begin. 
Damn. Oh, we ain't surviving. Caps begin to grow and spread Damn. while plants shrivel and die. Forests freeze and animals die in droves. Oh. As the Earth passes the orbit of Mars, the average surface temperature has plummeted to near minus 50 degrees Celsius. From space, Earth begins to look like an icy moon, the blue-green surface becoming the pale grey-white of death. As global infrastructure breaks down, people huddle together indoors, burning what they can for warmth as the temperature continues to drop, counting the days until they'll be out of food which no longer grows. Right, they're burning Harry Potter. Living at the oh, the day look, look, they're, they're burning Harry Potter. <laughs> until they'll be out of food which oh, no longer they. grows. <laughs> Everybody living at the surface is living on borrowed time. By the time Earth reaches Jupiter's orbit, surface temperatures sink to minus 150 degrees Celsius, lower than the coldest ever recorded temperatures in Antarctica. Needless to say, by now, almost everyone is dead. Fog. Without the energy from sunlight to evaporate water, <laughs> clouds don't form and the water cycle stops. Damn. The polar ice caps eventually touch at the equator and the oceans become covered in a thick layer of ice. As more and more of its heat leaks out, more water freezes onto the bottom of the ice sheet. The concentration of salt in the deep ocean grows, poisoning most animals Is it animals cold enough to freeze here. the core of the planet? Although around hydrothermal vents, communities of extremophiles might adapt even to these circumstances. Oh. Deep below the surface, some bacteria would not notice much of any of this, as they're still kept warm by the radioactive decay of elements in the Earth's core. Oh, okay, okay. As the Earth reaches the orbit of Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, the Sun is still the brightest star in the sky, but it's one among many, with stars uh... now visible during the day. The temperature Ooh. is now barely 40 degrees Celsius above absolute zero, below the freezing temperature of the gases in the atmosphere. A weird spectacle, enjoyed by no one unfortunately, unfolds as the atmosphere turns into nitrogen and then oxygen snow. Over a few years, oxygen it's snow? What's that? an icy 10 meter thick sheet all over the planet's surface with only a thin whisper of gas remaining. The frozen corpses of flora and fauna are buried beneath them. As Earth leaves the solar system, it becomes a rogue planet, traveling alone through the dark, lifeless and in solitude. Yikes. But weirdly enough, there is hope. Oh? Humanity would not be surprised by this potential extinction event. We'd notice it thousands of years in advance. Ah. There's not a lot we could do to stop a star, but we could prepare. Most of us would perish, but a few million could survive in huge artificial complexes powered by geothermal and nuclear energy, possibly even fusion if we can learn to use the ice around us for power. Here, humanity oh, might survive for hundreds of thousands of years. At some point, we would become used to our circumstances, and new generations would watch documentaries in disbelief about the time we had our own star and could walk the surface of Earth. And at some point, we might decide to look for another home. If the Earth were lucky enough to pass by another star, people are already thinking of going planet, to Mars. We could try to make a fresh start. Space flight, oddly enough, would become very easy without the atmosphere in the way. So it's not unthinkable that the last survivors would leave Earth behind and try again on a new planet around a new star. Fog. Maybe one day, thousands of years later, the descendants of humanity will tell legends about Earth's ancient past. <laughs> Stories of our lost home, of a mysterious icy planet, floating alone and empty through the dark of space. Bruh. So basically, the key to humanity's survival is learning about what we'll be dealing with. Well, we'd better get cracking then. Our friends from Brilliant are the perfect coaches on the way oh, to becoming more bog. science savvy. <laughs> Brilliant is a problem-solving website and app that makes science accessible in a practical way. More than 60 interactive courses give you the tools to crack problems in maths, logic and engineering all by yourself. Instead of a classic lecture format, Brilliant uses storytelling, code writing and hands-on problems to keep you entertained and engaged. This way, a small daily challenge can build up to real long-term understanding of science and achieving your STEM goals. Hell yeah, In brother. a nutshell, Brilliant surprises you and keeps you on your toes, all while sneaking some knowledge into your head without your really noticing. Right up our alley, really. To get a fresh perspective on science, go to brilliant.org nutshell and sign up for free.
And there's an extra perk for Kurzgesagt viewers. The first 200 people to use the link get 20% off their annual membership, which lets Hong. you view all the daily problems in the archives and unlock every course. Brilliant helps you end your day a little smarter. Still the best preparation for the future we can think of. <laughs> okay, Pog. Okay, okay, okay. So, if we lose the sun, we're screwed. That's pretty much what you, he said. The summarize sun keeps us alive. <laughs> good video, good video, good video. <clears throat> okay, everyone, that is the end of the video. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you check out the original description down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, comment what you'd like me to react to next, subscribe if you're new or just haven't yet. I will see you in the next video. Laters.